You might have heard a lot of buzz about virtual threads feature in Java 21. In today's video, we will explore this topic. What is the problem due to which virtual threads were introduced? What exactly are virtual threads? How do they benefit and different ways in which you can create them? In a typical web application, when a request arrives, a new thread is assigned to it. This thread then executes the entire flow of this request till the response is returned. Let's verify this. Here is a Spring Boot web application. A request arrives at the controller. It calls a service method, which in turn performs some task and then a response is returned. We have printed the name of thread that is executing this request in controller and service. Assuming that the executing thread takes some time here, I have deliberately added a delay of 2 seconds. Let's access this URL. Look, the same name is printed. Let's hit the URL once again. A different thread is used but the same thread for entire request. Now suppose this thread is accessing a database here or performing a network call. During this time, the thread goes into the waiting state and is not able to serve any incoming request. The problem is that if your application receives thousands of requests and every thread is waiting for this network call, since the number of threads are limited, as you can see here, at some point your application will not be able to accept any incoming request or it will respond slowly. Of course, you can increase this default limit, but by how much, since you don't know the number of requests that your application will be getting. Similar scenario is when you create a thread manually using an object of thread class, suppose in a desktop application. These conventional threads that we have been using till now are called platform threads or kernel threads. Each platform thread is created on top of an operating system thread or OS thread. This means that the number of platform threads that you can create is equal to OS threads. And needless to say, OS threads are limited to the memory capacity of the system on which the application is running. This is a weakness of traditional thread model. Secondly, if the platform thread has to wait for a blocking operation such as an input-output or network call, then this is a huge wastage of resources. Considering these challenges, Java 21 came up with a concept called virtual threads. These virtual threads are less expensive to create in terms of memory and speed since these are lightweight. As such, they can be large in number as compared to platform threads. But remember, the actual task is executed by platform thread and OS thread only. When a task needs to be executed, it is assigned to a virtual thread, which is then tied to a platform thread. This is called mounting. Now, a question arises, how do virtual threads solve the problem of blocking operations mentioned earlier? When a virtual thread needs to wait for a blocking operation such as input or output or network calls, it releases the platform thread and goes into waiting state. This is called unmounting. The platform thread is now free to execute other tasks. In the meanwhile, if some other task is assigned to another virtual thread, the same platform thread is free to execute this task for this virtual thread. If the same situation was with platform threads, then a second platform thread would be required to carry on this new task. And since virtual threads are more in number, they can handle more tasks. Now, as soon as this waiting virtual thread becomes free, it is assigned to a platform thread. It might be the same platform thread or any other one. Learning how to create a virtual thread is very easy and there are multiple ways to create a virtual thread. First way is using static off virtual method of thread class. This method is introduced in Java 21. You can simply call start method on returned object and supply it the task to execute in a new thread. Look, it takes an object of runnable as argument. We can pass a lambda expression which is the implementation of run method of runnable. You can also set the name of thread here only. So basically this is following a builder pattern where you can call one method after another to accomplish a task. Instead of directly starting the thread, we can also create an unstarted virtual thread with unstarted method in place of start. But then we have to call start method later where we have to start it. Second method is using start virtual thread of thread class. This is also a static method and accepts a runnable argument. 
which represents the task to be executed in the new thread. Third method is using an executor service. An executor service is created using executors class, which has static methods to create executor service, such as new single thread executor, new fixed thread pool, etc. There is a dedicated video on executor service whose link is displayed at the top right corner. You can check that out. To create virtual thread with executor service, a new method, new virtual thread per task executor, has been introduced in executors class. This will return an executor service that will execute tasks on virtual thread. To execute a task with this executor service, call its submit method and provide it the runnable object as in earlier methods. So, in this video, we learned the meaning of virtual threads, what problem do they solve, and how to create them in three different ways. In the coming videos, we will see how to configure Spring Boot application to use virtual threads by default. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.